welcome to edupedia world in this module we will learn about carl pearson's coefficient of correlation carl pearson's coefficient of correlation this method was introduced by british statistician carl pearson he was the first person to give a mathematical formula for measuring the degree of relationship between two variables in 1890 It is a mathematical quantitative method of calculating the coefficient of correlation. It overcomes the limitation of scatter diagram of not indicating precise magnitude of correlation. The Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation is also known as product moment correlation or simple correlation coefficient. It is the most popular and widely used method to calculate the correlation coefficient. it is based on arithmetic mean and standard deviation coefficient of correlation is denoted by r r is a pure number that is it has no unit according to carl pearson coefficient of correlation is determined by dividing the sum of products of deviation from their respective means by their number of pairs and their standard deviations features of carl pearson's coefficient of correlation first point knowledge of direction of correlation it gives the knowledge about the direction of relationship that is whether the relationship between two variable is positive or negative second feature size of correlation it indicates the size of relationship between the variables that is correlation coefficient ranges between plus 1 and minus 1 third point ideal measure it is an appropriate measure of correlation as it is based on most important statistical measures like mean and standard deviation fourth point indicates magnitude and direction the coefficient of correlation not only specifies the magnitude of correlation but also its direction if the two variables are directly related then the correlation coefficient will be a positive value and in case of inverse relationship we will get negative correlation coefficient value of correlation coefficient the value of the correlation coefficient shall always lies between positive negative 1 when r equals to positive 1 it means there is perfect positive correlation when r is equal to negative 1 it shows that there exists perfect negative correlation between the two variables if r is equal to 0 it means there is no relationship between the two variables however in practice correlation coefficient normally lies in between plus 1 and minus 1 next we come to calculation of carl pearson's coefficient of correlation There are four methods to calculate coefficient of correlation by Carl Pearson's method: actual mean method, direct method, shortcut method, and step deviation method. We can use any of these method as all four methods give us the same result. Let us study these methods in detail one by one in the coming slides. Actual mean method. This method involves the following steps. first we calculate actual mean of series x and series y then we find deviation of x series from arithmetic mean that is x equals to x minus arithmetic mean next we square these deviations and obtain their sum total that is sigma x square then we find deviations of y series equals to y arithmetic mean that is y equals to y minus arithmetic mean then we square these deviations and obtain their sum total that is sigma y square we find product of x and y and obtain sigma xy and last we apply the following formula to find coefficient of correlation r equals to sigma xy divided by under root sigma x square into sigma y square this is how we will calculate cal Pearson's coefficient of correlation in actual mean method Now let us understand actual mean method with the help of a following illustration 
In this particular illustration, we have to calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation from the following data. Data is given to us in the form of x and y. We will make a table of 7 columns. In the first column, we will write the values of variable x that is 50, 54, 56, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 65 and 75. We will add up these values. We will get sigma x equals to 600. Now we will calculate mean from it. So arithmetic mean equals to sigma x divided by n. n is 10. So 600 divided by 10 we will get 60 as arithmetic mean for the variable x. So in the second column we will write x equals to x minus arithmetic mean. So 50 minus 60 we will get minus 10. 54 minus 60 we will get minus 6. 56 minus 60 we will get minus 4. 58 minus 60 we will get minus 2. 59 minus 60 we will get minus 1. 60 minus 60 is 0. 61 minus 61. 62 minus 60 we will get 2, 65 minus 60 we will get 5 and 75 minus 60 we will get 15. Now we come to third column. In the third column we will write x square. So minus 10 square we will get 100, minus 6 square 36, minus 4 square 16, minus 2 square 4, minus 1 square 1, 0 square 0, 1 square 1, 2 square 4, 5 square 25, and 15 square 225. We will add up the values. We will get sigma x square equals to 412. Now in the fourth column we will take another variable that is y variable. We will write down the values that is 20, 22, 24, 30, 32, 36, 38, 40, 44 and 54. We will add up the values. We will get sigma y equals to 340. Now we will calculate arithmetic mean of the y variables. Arithmetic mean equals to sigma y divided by n. So 340 divided by 10 we will get 34 as arithmetic mean. Now in the fifth, fifth column that is y equals to y minus arithmetic mean. So 20 minus 34 we will get minus 14. 22 minus 34 we will get minus 12. 24 minus 34 we will get minus 10. 30 minus 34 comes minus 4, 32 minus 34 comes minus 2, 36 minus 34 2, 38 minus 34 4, 40 minus 34 6, 44 minus 34 10 and 54 minus 34 comes 20. Now in the next column we will write y square. So minus 14 square comes 196, minus 12 square 144, minus 10 square comes 100, minus 4 square comes 16, minus 2 square come 4, 2 square 4, 4 square 16, 6 square 36, 10 square 100 and 20 square 400. We will add up the values, we will get sigma y square equals to 1016. Now in the last column we will write xy, that is product of x and y. So, minus 10 into minus 14 comes 140, minus 6 into minus 12 comes 72, minus 4 into minus 10 comes 40, minus 2 into minus 4 comes 8, minus 1 into minus 2 comes 2, 0 into 2 comes 0, 1 into 4 comes 4, 2 into 6 comes 12, 5 into 10 comes 50 and 15 into 20 comes 300. We will add up the values. We will get sigma xy equals to 628. Now we got all the values. Now we will put up the formula that is coefficient of correlation r equals to sigma xy divided by under root sigma x square into sigma y square. We will put up the values that we got from the table and we will calculate it. We will get 0 0.97 as coefficient of correlation. As you can see that there exists high degree of positive correlation. This is how we will calculate 
coefficient of correlation by using actual mean method. Next we come to direct method. This method avoids the use of finding deviations. We use direct method by following these steps. First, we calculate the sum of values of series x and get sigma x. Next, we calculate the sum of values of series y and get sigma y. Then we find squares of values of series x and get sigma x square. And then we find squares of values of series y and get sigma y square. And last we find product of values of series x and series y and get sigma xy. Then we apply the following formula that is coefficient of correlation equals to r equals to n multiplied by sigma xy minus sigma x multiplied by sigma y divided by under root n into sigma x square minus sigma x whole square into n multiplied by sigma y square minus sigma y whole square. This is how we will calculate the coefficient of correlation under direct method. Let us understand direct method with the help of a following illustration. In this particular illustration we have using the same data that we have used in our first illustration of actual mean method. So let's start with the solution. We will make a table of 5 columns. In the first column we will write x variables that is 50, 54, 56, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 65 and 75. So we will add up the values we will get sigma x equals to 600. In the next column we will write x square. We will square up the values that is 50 square comes 2500, 54 square comes 2916, 56 square comes 3136. 58 square comes 3364, 59 square comes 3481, 60 squares come 3600, 61 square comes 3721, 62 square comes 3844, 65 square comes 4225 and 75 square comes 5625. We'll add up the values we will get sigma x square equals to 36,412. Now in the third column we will write y variables. That is 20, 22, 24, 30, 32, 36, 38, 40, 44 and 54. We will add up the values. We will get sigma y equals to 340. Now in the next column we will write y square. That is 20 square comes 400. 22 square comes 484. 24 square comes 576, 30 square comes 900, 32 square comes 1024, 36 square comes 1296, 38 square comes 1444, 40 squares comes 1600, 44 square comes 1936 and 54 square comes 2916. We will add up the values, we will get sigma y square equals to 12,576. In the last column, we will write product of x and y. 50 multiplied by 20 will get 1000. 54 multiplied by 22 comes 1188. 56 multiplied by 24 comes 1344. 58 multiplied by 30 comes 1740. 59 multiplied by 32 comes 1888. 60 multiplied by 36 comes 2160. 61 multiplied by 38 comes 2318, 62 multiplied by 40 comes 2480, 65 multiplied by 44 comes 2860 and 75 multiplied by 54 comes 4050. We will add up the values, we will get sigma xy comes 21,028. So we will get all the values, now we will apply the formula that is i equals to n multiplied by sigma xy minus sigma x multiplied by sigma y divided by under root n multiplied by sigma x square minus sigma x whole square multiplied by under root n multiplied by sigma y square minus sigma y whole square. We will put up the values and we will calculate it. We will get r equals to 0 0.97. As you can see that there is a high degree of positive correlation. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग एडुपीडिया वर्ल्ड वीडियोज़